Well, they're back causing a stir with their new album after 18 years, The Rolling Stones. But listen, they never really went away. They, they've been doing many different things that kept them in the social media, kept them alive, whether it was their personal lives or not. But we will get into the album. We will get into the lyrics in a minute. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to play the song and then give you a breakdown of it. It's going to be quick, simple and sliced, but not until we welcome back the incredible group that has disappeared and came back alive. Songs are rarely as one sided. Track one, as will be proved in a minute, as the Rolling Stones new single Angry which kicks off the Hackney Diamonds album they've come out with. The band's long-awaited fall album returned to the Jagger Richards songwriting partnership after 18 years. Now, the Stones were hardly ones for creeping quietly around the door. Sympathy for the Devil, Painted Black, Gimme Shelter and Brown Sugar have all teed albums off in the past. But Angry kicks it off the hinges with an opening riff that is instantly imitable theirs imitably theirs, solely theirs, as you're going to hear. In Kia Mood, it somewhat recalls another album opener, Start Me Up, which opened tat Tattoo You. But despite the band's advanced age today, that 1981 song now sounds rather leisurely in comparison with Angry's tight, energized strut. Let's listen, let's find out, and I'll give you a synopsis review of the song, including some of the words of the verses. Straight after we welcome back the Stones, welcome back. Two, one, two, three. Let's go.
Well, I have to say, guys, welcome back. And I'm not angry with you. It's been away for 18 years. You just have enough money to do what you wanted to do in 18 years. But what really, really, I have to say, would get to a lot of people is, you've come back with a song. And I'm going to say it straight. One word repeated repeatedly with another band would it sound boring. Another aspect to it is Mick Jagger's vocals always remain fresh, always remain the same. You play anything way back in the 60s, 70s, 80s. And these guys keep rolling out the hit after hit because it always sounds fresh. You put the drums, you put the guitar together, you put Mickey's, uh, Mickey, can I call him Mickey? I will. Mick Jagger's uh, vocals and what have you got? A Stones classic. And no other band can get away with it. I'm telling you, if it was a modern band today, rock and roll, trying out with that song, people would say, it's boring. But it's never boring with the Rolling Stones. My review for this is as follows. Jagger is massively entertaining, isn't he? Throughout a dramatizing, a lover's squabble with exasperation and bafflement. A really humanizing performance that reminds us for all and their millions of fans. Rock stars can never be insulated from no pain. He begins audibly on the back foot already and then quickly complains, and listen to this folks, that at 80 he hadn't had sex in a month. If I told you Mick Jagger how long it's been since I've had sex, you would start a fundraiser for me. You would. A month. Good God. Perhaps not so relatable after all. Anyway, that doesn't go down well. And relations deteriorate at a pace. By the bridge she's pleading, please don't forget about me. We never did, Mickey. Even though I call you Mickey because I'm Irish. Michael, Mickey. And Mick. I'll have to keep it to Mick. And I'm not taking the Mick out of saying that. He's now trying to do something we've all done. End the relationship well with dignity and harmony. That's what this song's about, but ending up mirrored in petty recrimination. He even attempts the classic gambit of suggesting one last shag for old time's sake. Now, if you need to know what a shag is, well, it's an Irish term, but it's, and a few little sound inputs would be, huh? I'm sure you, you understand now what it is because I have a lot of people from around the world who'd say, what does that word mean? Sex. If we go separate ways, let's go in a blaze, it continues. That doesn't work either because he says, I'm still taking the pills. I'm off to Brazil, he flounces as the song plays out in a long, anthetic gospel coda. In time, honoured fashion, Jagger goes spelunking for extra vowels so that Brazil ends up pronounce bra z o the whole thing is a complete hoot it really is the whole song was fresh there's a woman on a car i'm sure if anybody was wondering what the hell was going on they got an eyeful of that woman she'll go down as iconic now as let me think that james bond actress ursula andres who wore a bikini came out of the sea and looked spectacular and everybody for nearly 40 years thereafter had the woman as this iconic woman who walked out of that water like a goddess well there's a goddess on a car in rock and roll form jaggering it all over the bonnet for all to see with her ample two friends now you can if you look at the video long enough probably end up looking like a panda bear from just staring at it if you get my drift but the stones genius has always been taken up you know in many many ways has been has take the haunted spectral melodies of american blues and flick the casino lights onto them and so it is here as we've just seen done a cappella by a different singer jagger lines like i've never caused you no pain could have purely harrowed quality but he and the band cleverly wax and wane from minor to major chords, as you've heard, carrying the tale of alternative desperation and resignation. 
Producer Andrew Watt rightly allows for all manner of mirth, lower, you know, lowering down the mix, growling, distorted bass from Richards and Doom, pretending piano by sessioner Matt Clifford. Now between verses, Richards and Wood double up on the riff, then swap back and forth some brilliantly groaning, lurching mini solos, playing to, you know, fans love for that. Their freedom and creative hunger comes out when they do that. This is also the first recorded performance of a new drummer, Steve Jordan, and some stones might find his martial playing lacking compared with almost invisible mystical swing of the late Charlie Watts. Well, I'm going to say this. I watched a recent interview and he was endorsed by Charlie Watts. He was endorsed months before the inevitable death. So let's give him some slack. It's almost like the Il Devo when Carlos died, the deep bass soprano singer. And all the fans weren't giving the new guy who came along a chance. Let's give him a chance. Let's not be disparaging. The Stones have got him in the band for one reason, that he fits. He's a, he's a friend of the band. And, you know, he's helped out on numerous occasions and Charlie, God rest him, endorsed him. So let's all love and endorse him too. I don't want to be reading things about, oh, he doesn't live up. Nobody can live up to somebody as iconic as Charlie. Nobody can. But we can at least be sympathetic and open the door and allow him in if the band has. Anyway, that's my take on that particular thing but it's sympathetic and it's impactful timekeeping from Jordan even a niche touch of echo by what which so was if you listen carefully that keeps us all marching along like somebody having clearing a mid-argument stomp around the block what's death by the way does remind us of the mortality of the stones once so impossible seeming doesn't it and it surely preyed on their minds that they won't have that many chances to write new albums since Charlie's death. The quality here suggests they're really seizing this opportunity, especially with this song. It's fresh. As I said in the beginning, if any other vocalist had tried this song or any other band and that angry came out repetitively, people would say it's boring, uh, I don't like it, P pathetic. But that's what keeps the Rolling Stones rolling decade after decade filled out concerts all over the world because they have that mix they have that freshness they are the Rolling Stones Charlie mightn't be here but he's placed he's been replaced with a great man who will always echo his touches in his playing and that needs to be endorsed his playing doesn't need to be condemned anyway the quality here in this particular video that we've just seen it suggests that they really have seized, as I said, and I can't emphasize enough, the opportunity. But on angry at their boyish, buoyant accompanying press conference, they don't sound at all freighted with no Sophia. Why should they be? Why should they be? They're loved and adored. They, what their musical contribution to the music industry is so prolific, so unattainable by so many rock bands and will never be attained that we can only say endorsed in 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 what's that academy the the, uh, the famous rock and roll hall of fame is well deserved well deserved guys instead and i'll finish with this it situates them in a class of their own rock tenarians strutting back out to the world stadiums is what's ahead of us before their time runs out. I'm not angry that it took 18 years to come back with the album. I'm not angry that your first single off the new album is called Angry. I'm one of the happiest guys in the world to see you back, guys. Thanks for listening. Take care. And don't forget to like and comment. Bye.